everybody, I'm Regis Philbin. Welcome to my personal workout. We're here in Central Park in uh, New York City, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about how I'm working out these days. You know, I've worked out, I guess, all of my life, and I've got the pictures to prove it. Now, you've never seen these pictures. I've never showed them to you because, frankly, I didn't want anyone to see them. But let me tell you about myself. I was very, very painfully thin when I was a kid growing up, and it really bothered me. Orchard Beach, New York, in the 40s, I don't know, pretty close to being a skeleton the way I see it. Well, it really bothered me. My father came back from the Marine Corps in World War II, and uh, he had boxed before he went away. We took some boxing lessons, but it wasn't until I bought my first set of weights from Bob Hoffman in uh, York, Pennsylvania, and then Dan Lurie here in New York, that I actually began to work out. This is one of my first physique pictures. Everybody's got to have a before picture. This was mine. You can see the curtain almost got up to the ceiling there. Almost, but not quite. So I began working out in the stable behind my, my house up in the Bronx. And this is the wrong way to do the bench press, incidentally. See that little, um, that little box I'm working on? Hurt my back, and it hurt my back for the rest of my life. But anyway, I had begun working with my weights, doing my curls. You'll notice that brick wall behind me there. Well, that building still stands now, more than 40 years later. And as a matter of fact, we were back there just a few months ago, and I returned for the first time in so many years, right back to the place where my workouts first began. Only the brick looks familiar to me. Shall I do a push-up, Gelman? Gelman wants me to do some push-ups for all time's sake, okay? Hey, hey, hey! Yeah, I still got it. That was a thrill to be back there and to feel those old vibes again. That's where it all began. Then I continued uh, working out with uh, Father Lang in the uh, University of Notre Dame, the fourth strongest man in the world. He was uh, an elderly priest who ran a, a tough gym back there. I worked out with a Marine jet fighter pilot uh, uh, during my service days. Here I am doing the 25-pound uh, curls. Uh, Bill Rankin was his name. I've worked out over the years mainly because of my television show with such people as Jack LaLanne and Hulk Hogan and many of the Mr. Americas. It's been a lot of fun. But you know, it wasn't until I had my blocked artery that maybe you heard about this year that got me into uh, aerobics. I never jogged, I never walked, I never took that seriously until this happened, until I was told that really I needed to do this. And that's when I decided to take up walking. Now we're gonna talk about walking at the first part of this video. This is a, a walking formula that was devised by the American College of Sports Medicine. It's called FIT, F-I-T. F is for frequency, how often you walk. I is for the intensity, how fast you walk. And T is for the time or the duration or how long you should walk and how far. So I started walking. And can I tell you something? I love it. Not only that, I feel terrific. I think I have more stamina, more endurance. I mean, enough even to handle Kathy Lee in the morning. But it really has made a difference. And here is Stu Middleman. Stu, it's nice to see you again. Stu is the director of running and walking programs at the Equinox uh, Fitness Center here in Manhattan. And I've got a million questions to ask you. You know, I mean, I'm just into this walking recently. I'm feeling good, as I say. But I see people with different strides, different postures. What is the official best way to walk? Well, there are really three things to think about right at the beginning. The first is to be really relaxed in your stomach. And you want to breathe low into your stomach. That sets up your whole body. Okay. Secondly, you want to be relaxed in the shoulders. You may want to roll them a little bit and just keep them relaxed, not tense. And the last thing to think about is to be looking straight ahead, not down, uh -huh. and not up. All right. As we move, we're simply going to rock our weight forward from the heel of the foot to the ball of the foot. Gotcha. So get that motion going. And the left foot will move with the right arm. And what we'll do is we'll start walking straight ahead. All right, Are fine. you ready to go? I'm ready to go. We'll go with our right foot first. Right foot first, okay. There we go. And we'll just swing our arms. Just swing your arms gently side. like this. Right, and this is how you want to start off walking. And as we pick up the pace, we'll begin to move our elbows or bend our elbows slightly and we'll be using more and more of our upper body. What does that do for you, Stu, to, move, to bend your arms like well, this? Well, you want to use as much of your body as possible. It makes you distribute your weight more evenly as uh -huh. you move and gives you a better, better workout. How, how do I look, Stu? Good? You look fabulous. All I right. Mean, just relax your hands just a tiny bit, and we're all set. I must admit, I haven't raised my elbows, you know, this high 
and I, uh, but I, but I can see the the benefits to it. Yeah, that's great. All right, good. Gives you a little uh, upper arm workout that's it. too. I think I got this movement down cold, Stu. How am I looking? Good? Looking great. Let me ask you some other questions. How far do I have to walk? Well, the distance is really a factor of how long you walk, and I want you walking 20 to 30 minutes. 20 to 30 minutes, all right, fine. At what point do I start getting my heart beat up? Well, the heartbeat up, you want to bring it up very slowly. The more slowly you bring it up, the more fat you'll burn during the 20 to 30 minutes. So start walking slower very and then pick easy. up the pace. And very how easy. fast do I have to go? You want to walk up to the point that you start to breathe heavy or un unable to carry on a conversation. Then you're working too hard. So between 20 and 30 minutes of walking. Yes. And picking up the pace where you can't where you feel that you're, you're you breathing harder. You want to feel harder. comfortable and able to carry on a mm -hmm. conversation. As soon as you start to breathe too heavy or are unable to carry on a conversation, you're working too hard. And how many times a week should I walk? You need to walk about three times a week to get the cardiovascular benefits, and you may add a day or two beyond that if you want to specifically burn fat. Oh, okay, good. Is there anything else I should know? No, you should just be enjoying it and be comfortable while you do it. Well, I got to tell you, I really am enjoying it, and I do feel terrific, and I thank you very, very much. It's a pleasure. You know, there are other ways to get this kind of benefit. If you don't have a beautiful park to walk in, all kinds of exercise devices, and we're going to show you some with the help of some very close friends of mine and yours. And here is the foremost exponent of the treadmill, and incidentally, I'm very proud of her. She was on the treadmill before me. She told me about it, and nobody works as hard as she does on the treadmill. Call Our security. Own Kathy. Who's that region, Hi, Regis. How you doing? I'm good. I just did my warm up. Yes, you work. You warm up for two or three minutes, do you? You know, Something I'm like usually that. running around after Cody, so that's yeah, warm up. That's up. your but warm up. You're supposed to warm up for mm -hmm. like three minutes. Yeah. At like three miles an hour. Right. You know. And then how fast do you go once you uh, start out? Well, I only do two miles each day, Regis. Yeah. But the first mile I do on incline and down like a like a course, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And I do that at 4.5 miles an hour. And then the second mile I do sort of at a, a very, very slow jog, and that's at five. So and that's on the track, just around the right. ground. Right, right now you're on the 4.5? 4 4.5. And what elevation are you at? Right now, 2%. I just, just started it, so it was zero, and then I mm -hmm. go to two, and I think the highest is like 12. You wind up at 12? Yeah, but only for like, for, you know, 30 for, seconds. Yeah, but that's still incredible. That's quite a gap. Hey, tell me about it. Wow. And then how long do you do? I do to the two miles, which, you know, it takes about, oh, 27 minutes. 27 like minutes. That. But you watch TV to get through it? And... I get so bored. Yeah. If, I, if, like, I'm at a hotel or something and I'm doing it and I don't have a TV, yeah. then I realize how much hard work it is. But if I'm watching TV, you know, reruns of Regis and Kathleen, <laughs> then it's very... You'll settle for anything. Very entertaining. That's <laughs> it. So, see, sometimes then, like, if I'm losing my, you know, you got to grab mm -hmm. here, too. And when do you kind of break a sweat and get warmed up and... Pretty quick, pretty soon, I do. Uh -huh. uh, but I am one of those people that sweats naturally. Yeah, I, I could tell. <laughs> I've seen it <laughs> many times. Well, you know me, I like to choose the people I sweat <laughs> with. That's why I exercise at home. <laughs> but you fell in love with this right off the bat, didn't you? Remember you told me you bought one, you got one, and gee, all of a sudden you find yourself on it every day. You know, Reach, after I had Cody... I'd never been an exerciser. You were the one that was really, That's right. really good about but going never and doing on it. this. I know, and I went on to do uh, Carnival Cruise commercials, and uh, they had a beautiful spa on the new ship, mm -hmm. and I just thought, you know, uh, if things are not where they used to be. I better get on this treadmill. I fell in love with it to the point. Now, see, now it's going down to yeah. uh, minus one percent. Right. Still going at the four point five miles an hour, and mm -hmm. you just use your arms when it's comfortable to. Sure. And. Uh, you know, so you fell in love on the ship, and then you got your own, and you've been on it ever since. To the point, Reach, where if I don't do it now, not only do I feel guilty, I miss it. I miss the way I feel. Afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. ever since then, now I've gotten involved a little bit more in other kinds of exercise. Mm -hmm. I do some weights. Sure. Frank's got his, his Paramount machine mm -hmm. over there, yeah. and I do some, some, I put little weights around my ankles and do leg lifts and yeah. things. Yeah. It really, it, it's a high you can't buy anywhere, isn't it? Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm sold on it. That's for sure. If, if you were to go up to five right now, can you? Five miles up. Yeah. yeah, but I'd have to run. I'll show you how to do it. You just—it's all on the controls here. All right. And that's—that's that's it. That's what I would do the second mile at, but just on a track, not on an incline. And that would take you what? About? I think it's 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Yeah. That's some work. No, it's 12 minutes at five. Yeah. It's 12. Uh -huh. Well, I think that's terrific, really. 
I'm well, very proud of you. I'm so happy for you that you're on your treadmill now because it's the best you know, I, I cardio I have to basketball. agree. I have to agree. I love it. And your stamina. Make sure you wear a good training bra. <laughs> <laughs> and your stamina's great and you feel wonderful, right? I gotta, I gotta keep up with Frank Gifford. That's right. That's, you that, know, here that's, I am at 6%, Reach, huh? Let me give you a quick kiss and we'll say love goodbye. You. Give Thanks my love very to much. Joy. Okay, keep working. He's the greatest. He's the king. Thought he'd never leave. And this is our rec room and uh, gym, and uh, this is where Joy and I uh, take our workouts. And here she is on the Stairmaster, which happens to be her favorite uh, uh, workout um, uh, piece of equipment. How are you? Good, you nice look familiar. to see you. Don't you live yes. here? Yeah, I sure do. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to show everybody what you do to keep that fabulous oh, figure. Oh, aren't you kind? <laughs> no, I do. I really prefer the Stairmaster to all the equipment because I feel like it's more concentrated for the um, butt, the tush, and the, the thighs, and you know, the uh, hamstrings. Mm -hmm. And then of course I don't just do this, I alternate it with some toning exercises, yeah. which you showed me. Sure. But this and actually gets the heart rate up and gets you going, doesn't I think it? You, I think you can get the same benefit that you do from the treadmill. I yeah. think if you, I usually do 15 minutes. 15 minutes? And I do an interval workout, which is, you know, a random up mm -hmm. and down. Mm -hmm. And I feel I can actually feel my muscles in my legs, you know, I can feel the benefit. Mm -hmm. And when you started, how long did you do? I kind of had to work up to 15 minutes. Yeah, sure. I, you know, it doesn't seem like it, but it's a lot of effort after Absolutely. a while. And then the programs are more difficult or easy, depending I'm on, on how you eight, feel like it. you can go up as high as you want. Uh -huh. um, and I think I started at 10 minutes, and then I have 12. 15, I'm hoping I can get up to 20. Sure, absolutely. Now, when you're on the treadmill, yeah. you and I are together. Yeah, and we kind of talk it over. <laughs> but I can't get into this, and I notice you really have not taken any interest in the treadmill. I think it's wonderful. I think it tones you from the waist down. Yeah. Well, that's very good, And Joy. I felt on the treadmill, I think you get an overall benefit, but this is for me, because all my problems are from the waist Are they down. really? I don't, I don't think there are any kind of problems. <laughs> that's I, what you've said. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you for coming to visit. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And who do you think those legs belong to? Yes, there is one more way to get that aerobic exercise, and this is Gelman's way. He loves the bicycle, How you don't reach? you? Love it. Love the bike. Actually, you've toured all over Europe, all over the eastern part of the United States, and the west, too, right? That's right. Yeah. I've biked all over the place. Mm -hmm. It really is a fun way to get exercise. Mm -hmm. And whenever I can do it outdoors, I try to do that. Indoors, it's still good or exercise, just not as yeah, much fun. But outdoors is, is really great. Oh, I got yeah. you have the lot scenic uh, stuff in front it gives of you. Gives you a reason to exercise. Mm -hmm. you know? it how gives far? You destination. How far did you used to go in there? Well, yeah. when you're on a trip, you can go thirty to fifty to seventy miles in a Seven, day. You did seventy miles, Gilman. Sure. You will swear out an affidavit. I you swear. Oh I did 70. boy, seventy miles is is quite a hike. Yeah. On a bike. All right. So, but when you're indoors, tell me what you do. How long you well, stay on? I keep the tension down mm -hmm. so I can do a lot of uh, RPM, 60 mm -hmm. to 90 RPM. Uh -huh. And uh, this way it's less stress in your knees and you can do it longer. Right, how and long I, do you do it? I try to do it at least 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. On a good day, uh, I could do 40 or 45 minutes. You feel like a good pump when you're through with 20? Oh yeah, it really gets you going. You can see I'm starting to sweat right burning, now. Oh, burning heart calories. pumping. Oh, yeah. and you're no strong, energy. Gilman, you're That's strong. Right. <laughs> And no sore knees from uh, running. That's the important No thing. bouncing. Yeah, to smooth. a lot of people, that means everything. Yeah. And you watch a little TV as your... Uh... Always. TV is great. Or yeah. music. But TV, mm -hmm. I prefer, since I am a uh, TV producer, yes, if you, you haven't are. noticed. Yes. And I watch our show. Very good. All right. Well, that's his favorite way to do it. And incidentally, a lot of people love the bike as well. All right, Gilman, this is going to conclude our aerobic this workout. This is it? Yes. No more? I'm going in now to the, uh, the exercise no portion. No rollerblading with me? No rollerblading, but you <laughs> can right. do that, too, if you like. Thanks very much, right. Michael. I appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. So I want to thank Gilman and Joy and Kathy Lee for showing us their aerobic training. Very, very important, you know. I, I regret that I didn't get started on aerobic training a lot earlier, but I'm doing it now. And as I told you, I, I feel terrific because of it. So that's very important. Second half of our workout takes place in the gym, at your home, with weights, without weights, but it's, it's exercise. I've always done that, and I've always felt terrific because of it. And it's never too late, really, to start that. I guarantee you, not only do you do it because you want to build muscle, or big muscles, you want to increase bone density. That's very important. You want to improve your posture. You want to prevent lower back problems, coordination, flexibility, even more stamina. 
guarantee you, you'll feel the difference if you get started on this particular program. Now, I know there are lots and lots of training routines. Everybody's got one. All I can do is tell you what I do. This is my routine. Now, you don't have to start with the three sets and a lot of weight. You can start with no weight at all, or light weights, and then gradually build up. If you could do an exercise for 12 repetitions, that means you can start to increase your weights. So, what I want you to do is start with no weights, light weights, do 8 to 12 reps, depending on what you can do, and just do one set, and then gradually, slowly build up and get into it. You'll feel stronger, you'll feel better, you'll want to do more, and you will do more. So let's recap the whole thing right now. Take a look at this graphic, and let me tell you what you're going to be doing. In week one, in week two, you'll do one set per exercise, two or three times a week, eight to 12 repetitions. In week three and four, you'll do two sets of that exercise, two or three times a week, for 12 repetitions. Weeks five and six, three sets of the exercise for two or three times a week, for 12 repetitions. And week seven and eight, you'll increase your weights, You'll do three sets of each exercise, two or three times a week, for 12 repetitions. All right, we're ready now for our warm-up exercises. And incidentally, warming up is very, very important. Don't want you to pull a muscle or a sprain or anything. This is the warm-up that I do. Ready? Here we go. Just like that. Get a nice stretch in your Achilles tendon. A little bit of a leg workout, raise that body temperature. Here's the second one. Nice stretch there. Really feel it in your, in your side, your oblique muscle, in your back just start to swing. Straightening your leg as you swing over. Really a great upper body and lower body warm-up. Warm-up number three. Push off, and then push it back. Off on that leg, sort of a half squat, and just push back. By now you should be breaking into a little bit of a sweat, which is exactly what you want in your warm -up. This is a tricky one. I'm going to punch out with one, one arm and raise my leg at the same time. All right. Number four, number five rather, just a stretch up there. As far as you can go, Straightening this leg, bending the, the other one, and just reach up there and grab it. Then you kind of fall into a sort of a squat back here, roll your back into a ball, and then come on up again with a big stretch. And one more time up. down into your squat, roll your back up, stretch it out real good, and you are done. Now you're ready for your chest workout. So the first body part is going to be the chest, and let's start with the greatest chest exercise of them all, the old-fashioned push-up. 
This is great. You don't have any weight. You don't have to worry about it. Just get down on the floor like this. And incidentally, if you can't do a push-up, you could always do what they call the female push-up, and that is just do it right on your knees, going down like this. Hands should be about shoulder length. Fingers straight out. We'll get set. Try to do 15, okay? All right, you really can't beat the old-fashioned push-up, can you? You've been doing it for years. Always try to do a little stretch, a little stretch after those exercises so that you avoid the cramping. All right, we're going to superset that now with two other exercises. This is my trainer, Debbie White. Not bad, huh? Do I know how to pick them? We're going to do some flies now. Put both feet up. Thanks, Deb. Start overhead like this, and then in a circular manner, just bring the dumbbells down to that level and really feel it in the pecs and in the chest gives you a good stretch and a good workout too All right, we're going to stack that up with our, with our bench press. You can do this with a barbell or dumbbells, as we're doing in our case. A little heavier weight, back in the same position, feet up, and grab those dumbbells, get them overhead, and here we go. Just down to there. Kind of squeeze it when you bring it up. Same kind of breathing. Out as you get them up. In on the way down. All right. There you go, Deb. Put that like that. And there you go. Three exercises, three dynamite exercises for your chest. All right, let's get to work on that back now. And what you should have is a, some light dumbbells in your hand. This is gonna be an explicit exercise. Bend your legs, bend your back a little bit. Dumbbells up here and just bring them straight up. Make those shoulder blades meet behind you. Breathing on the way up. Get to take your stretch there. Interlock your fingers and just kind of pull those back muscles back. Ah. Do it in the front too. Ah, oh, that's good. Wait a little bit, take a little rest. Maybe a sip of water if you need it. And we're going to do the one arm rowing motion. Again, using your bench, knee and hand, same hand, same leg. Bending over, picking up that weight, straightening your back. Moving it out just a little bit and then pull it right up. But feel it in your back and make that shoulder and back do the most of the work. Right up to you like that. Ah. Now you switch, work the other side. Same situation, same leg, same hand. Pick it up with the other hand, straighten the back, pedal out a little bit, and then pull it up. Again, making the latissimus dorsi muscle and your deltoid do most of the work. So much for the, the one arm. 
Now here's my final exercise for the back. It's bend your legs, get a dumbbell or barbells, get it straight up here like this, bend those legs, take that pressure off your lower back, and just pull this weight right up to your chest like that. Concentrating on the muscle, really feel it. Pulling up on the way down, All right, there you go. That's it for the back. Don't forget to stretch out real good. Oh, yeah. Lock those fingers in, and you're ready for your shoulders next. Okay, let's get to work on the uh, shoulders now. Thanks, Debbie, very much. Watch this, kid. All right, light dumbbells here because we're going to do three exercises in one, five reps apiece, okay? Bend your knees slightly and just raise, keep your, keep your tummy in, and just raise your arms straight with a slight twist. You'll find that makes all the difference in the world. Great definition if you just do it like that. There's two. Up like that, bend down. That one little dip really gives you the ultimate. There's four and there's five. Now that was straight on. Second set of five, 45 degrees out. Just straight out like that. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Are you feeling it? Good. I'll bet you are. Now, straight. Keep those legs bent. And just pull it out like that, making the shoulders do the work. Make the shoulder do the work now. Feel it right there in your... You must be getting very tired now. Just in time, huh? All right, that's our, our first exercise for the shoulders. Take a little stretch. Always stretch, hold it. Take a couple of breaths while you're holding it. Relieve the pressure off that shoulder. Are you getting a little dry at this point? I tell you, I am. Just a little swig of the old water. I never really believed in drinking during the exercise routine, but it really does help. All right, second shoulder exercise. The old-fashioned dumbbell press. Just bend the knees slightly. Hold them out like this. Not like this. Try it like this, okay? And then one at a time, the alternate press. And not all the way up. Don't lock it in there. Just bring it up almost to the, to the top. But leave yourself a little room to come down. And when you come down, start raising the other one. There you go. All right. We're going to go for 12 reps. Dave Letterman can't do this. You know he can't. <sighs> Not done yet. Yeah, one more exercise to go. First, you know, the old stretch. Believe it or not, it really does help. And don't shake it back and forth like that. Hold it in one position and breathe in and breathe out. That's the best relief for that muscle. Last of uh, a series of three exercises for the shoulders. It's called the upright rowing motion. Again, with a barbell if you like, with a broomstick if you like. But here's what you do. Again, just bend those knees slightly. Take the pressure off your back. Weights directly in front of you, right up to your chin. And down. Up to the chin. There you go. And that's for your shoulders. Okay, ready to hit those arms? Again, just bend those knees slightly. Stomach in, chest out. Starting with fairly light dumbbells, but we're gonna do a lot of reps. 15 reps, and I'll show you how now. Keep the elbows in to your sides. There's one. Five, right up to this point. Three. Four. Five. Now up to here, and back down to that point again. Two, three, four, five. Now all the way down again, and now a complete movement. Five, 
That's an awfully good pump. That's for your biceps. Minimum of rest in this particular set. We're going right into the triceps now so we get the complete arm. Bend over, like this. Straighten them out and give yourself a little twist at the end. Do you see how I'm twisting it up into a palms up position? Just that little twist will give your tricep head a terrific workout. That little movement really gets it. Really gets your tricep. Ah. Okay. Put this right down here. Now we go right into our, our next bicep exercise. Thanks, Dad. It's just thumb front curls. Really feel it in that bicep. In that bicep. Ah, number ten. Okay. Now, couple that with yet another tricep exercise. This involves the bench. Just lay down out flat. Feet up, okay. Take your dumbbell on either end, or your barbell if you want, and just lower it straight over your eyes, keeping your elbows in a locked position. And just put the pressure on that tricep. And you can really feel it. Okay, the last one. There we go. All right. <clears throat> now, we ended up with some concentration curls. Minimum of rest in between these, these exercises. Just lock your elbow right into the side of your knee like this so that you're getting all of the pressure on your bicep. Lean over, bring it right up, slowly. Feel it right there. Can't have one arm bigger than the other. Come on. Lock it in. Make that bicep do the work. Not too fast, not too slow. In a certain rhythm where your muscle is really feeling it. One final tricep, and now you've done three bicep and three tricep exercises in the arms. Get a fabulous workout. This is a simple one, too. Do this on a chair, any piece of furniture. Just get a position like this, and go down into this stretch. And again, feel it in the tricep head. Okay, I guarantee you that is a fabulous arm routine and you're gonna love it and you're gonna see results too. Now just in case your aerobics didn't give you enough of a leg workout, here are some more exercises for your legs and your butt. Hang onto a post, wall if you can, bend this leg, 
Keep this one ready. All the pressure is on this leg. And bring this one up, straighten it out, and down. Up, straighten it out, and down. Up, straighten it out, and down. May not look like much, but it's really deceptive. And in no time at all, you'll begin to feel it in your legs. Ah, good, last one. Okay, now get ready for uh, the other leg, of course. Come on. Got to bend this one. Up and out. Really feel it right here, and in your back as well. All right, the second one we're gonna do is some, some more half squats. Just raise your arms out, lower into a half squat, and right back into it. Okay, ready? Here we go. Just about that far, not all the way down. Just enough to feel it in your thighs. It's really a great exercise. Now, if you need them, light dumbbells will be fine, or maybe no dumbbells at all if you're just starting. But well, we're gonna do some, some lunges now. Okay, ready? Here we go. Straight, one step out, bring it back. Again, bring it back. Out, and back. Just like that. Again, bring it back, out and back, just like that. Probably one of the greatest leg conditioning exercises in the mall. Okay. Now, finally, the last one. Requires a wall, a door, a post like this. And what we're gonna do, just go right down into a squat and lower our back like that in our head and then slowly come up, straighten up and give a good stretch. Terrific exercises for your legs, for your butt. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. Here are four great abdominal exercises for that uh, midsection. We're gonna do about 15 reps on the on the first one. Keep your legs bent. Hold your your arms over your chest, and just bring your head and your shoulders, upper back, off the mat like that. And make sure your abdominals are doing the work. Don't forget to breathe. Letting out up here. Breathe on the way down. If you can just concentrate on that midsection and know that the abs are working, it'll help a lot. Now a stretch, just hold it for a couple of seconds, leave that pressure. The second one, 
Hands straight out, right on your thighs. Bring that head up and the neck and the shoulders and as much of the back as you can. And feel it right in the abs. Concentrate on them. Okay, another stretch. Now, third exercise. We're gonna put our hands behind our head, and then just pull the left leg up to meet the right elbow. Here we go. Extend your arms and kind of give it a good stretch like that. And that'll be the frosting on the cake. <sighs> Reach out as much as you can. <sighs> ah. Ah. Okay, now the stretch. Oh, stretch feels good after that. Now we do the other side. Okay, now just reach over. Final pull. And one more stretch. Now, I'm straight out. And just reach up and up. And let the arms go back a little further each time. Feel it in your abs right now, don't you? Yeah. Can't help. Okay, now we're gonna do a cool down stretch, one leg at a time. Just hold it up there. Very important to stretch at the conclusion of your workout, too. Helps get rid of any soreness. Helps you come out of it real easily. Stretch on both legs. And then we're gonna turn over and give one more stretch like this. Feet straight down and pull all the way down as far as you can. And just feel it in the back, the arms, the shoulders. And that's it. It's all over now. Now I guarantee you the feeling that you get right after this workout and for the next few hours is absolutely sensational. Nothing, you can't buy it anywhere. You're going to be up. You're going to be strong. You're going to be ready for anything. Can't guarantee you'll get your own morning show, but if you ever meet Kathy Lee, you'll be strong enough to handle it. All right, now all you gotta do is get started. Come on, right now, all right? Okay, thanks very much for being with us. Good luck to you, and get going, all right? Bye-bye for now.